Hi everybody. I welcome you one and all uh, for the session number three. I am Dr. V, selection lecturer in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Government Polytechnic College, Haryana. Just to recap what the things we understood in the last two sessions, to start from background of mechatronic system, and we already learned the evolution of mechatronic systems and its importance and its different applications in a different fields like aerospace, machine tool, agriculture, aeronautical, etc. etc. and the importance of mechatronic systems. Addition to the, in addition to this, you understood what is a system and the types of system. Under this, you learned a closed loop system and open loop system. So these details, detailed information gives you a lot of idea to understand the next information of electronic subject. To check the overview of our session three, session three, <coughs> includes uh, sensors and transducer, its definitions, its classification, and its uh, performance uh, terminologies. This performance terminology also be referred as uh, specifications. To start from the definition of a sensor, sensor is an element which produces a signal corresponding to the quantity being measured. You might have already seen a uh, different sensors and transducers in the earlier uh, sessions. So that's how actually you can see a different uh, sensory devices, which senses the input, val input value that can be measured and gives the output uh, generally in the form of uh, digital signals. Go, if you go with an example, a temperature sensor senses the temperature and gives the corresponding equivalent output equivalent temperature value. Similarly, a light sensor senses the light or image or image of an object and gives the output maybe in the form of a binary values or digital numbers. To understand more about sensors, just, just uh, have a look of uh, different uh, sensory devices. This optical camera, you might have seen in uh, different uh, and different uh, places like uh, if you go to a railway station, bus stop, bus stand, bus stops, even uh, theaters, and in uh, even in uh, some houses, even colleges, uh, in um, in all these places, uh, cameras are being fixed at uh, different uh, places to capture the images of the <coughs> images. So, in to Concern more of uh, security reasons, uh, people are going for different uh, camera systems. And these are sound, uh, sound sensor, it uh, sends the sound and gives the analog or digital output. So, similarly, a non contact type or temperature sensor, it senses the temperature of an object and gives the output in the form of uh, digits. Okay, this, this is how different sensory devices are being used. These devices uh, senses either uh, an image or a light or a sound or a temperature. So, and gives the output uh, generally in the form of uh, digital signals. <clears throat> you check few more uh, types of sensory devices like uh, infrared sensors, thermo thermistors, and we can check out that uh, photos, photo sensors, soil moisture detectors, rain sensors, and we can check out uh, humidity sensors, and we can see metal detectors. Like this, uh, number of sensors are being used to measure a different uh, parameters or physical values. Come to the definition of a transducer, Transducer is also a sensor which produces output, but 
by change by undergoing some physical changes in uh, in the sensor type it produces output signals uh, either in a digital or analog type in mean, most of the occasion it's a digital type whereas uh, <clears throat> transducer it gives the output uh, by undergoing some physical changes that means here you need to measure the physical change dimensions suppose if a, a transducer measured some value say 1 cm after exposing to different uh, physical uh, parameters like a temperature or a force or some some other parameter it ex it expands or contrast it, it it loses its dimensions if you measure that dimension so that gives you an idea of uh, change in its uh, physical value this value is going to be measured from that we are able to judge uh, what is the input value that's how a transducer is a sensor which produces a output by undergoing some physical changes okay that you can understand in detail uh, in the examples so there are two examples good examples which uh, gives a clear idea of uh, transducers how exactly it loses its dimensions and uh, gives and uh, different parameters are going to be measured one is uh, a strain gauge used to measure a force or a torque or a load etc and it produces uh, analog output uh, subjected to some physical change changes upon it upon load acting on it okay load or a force or a torque etc acting on it similarly in another example a biometallic strip used in an iron box to control switch on and off when uh, when it exposed to heat okay these are the two examples gives you lot of idea about uh, transducers look at these this is a biometallic strip uh, so here two dissimilar metals are being used uh, these two metals have different uh, thermal like expansion or coefficient of expansion say steel this is a top surface is actually a steel and the bottom one is a copper copper have got a highest higher thermal coefficient compared to steel whenever this bimetallic strip exposed to heat the copper copper or a brass starts expanding so whenever it expand whenever whenever it expands it does a specific task like i with either to open a switch or to close a switch or to move other some mechanical means so that you can measure it you look at this so the steel the the steel which is been actually connected to this uh, copper or a brass uh, strip will try to push this back uh, after uh, removal of uh, heat or uh, so it, it, if a biometallic strip uh, strip is been uh, taken out from the uh, heating unit okay this is how biometallic strips have this different uh, dissimilar metals have uh, different uh, thermal uh, coefficients so this principle is been used in a different instruments like in uh, look at this this is the one way so this biometallic strip whenever it is exposed to the heat it starts like one of the metal is going to be expands so by that time it uh, operates uh, a racken pinion mechanism a pointer connect to the uh, racken pinion mechanism start showing some reading so this with this in, uh, instruments you can uh, tabulate uh, for what material sorry what temperature so what is the value you are getting after tabulating that so that you are able to measure the unknown temperature at any time this is a one good example way biometallic strips are been used uh, to measure uh, temperature or heat so in another example you see this actually looks like a switch this switch is closed by this biometallic uh, strip so whenever this uh, biometallic strip exposed to heat it's one of the metal is going to be starts expand that time 
it delinks with the switch so that uh, the switch may off so whenever you remove that heat source so the other metal adjoining to that uh, the expanded strip will uh, push back so that uh, again it will be get contacted that's how this is the mechanism that has been used in the iron box for auto on and off these two examples gives you clear idea of how a sensor or you can call it as a transducer changes its physical dimension by measuring its physical changes you can able to judge what is the value of a particular what you call a parameter these are all different thermal sensor which have been used in a various applications maybe in uh, <clears throat> thermal plants chemical plants and even now for now or for in uh, casting uh, boilers in process industries at uh, is uh, to measure the steam temperature boiler temperature etc and etc there are number of uh, non contact side type of sensors also available in these days these are all different uh, pressure gauges these are all again uh, uh, <coughs> sensors which measures the or which senses the pressure and gives the output either in analog or digital forms look at uh, another example for a transducer just now i explained about the strain gauge a strain gauge uh, it's like a thin copper wire structure or a foil structure which it's, it's been actually engraved on a, a glass plate thin polymer plate and the ends of these wires or a foils are going to be connected to which and which are electrical circuits so these wired structure acts like a resistance to the electrical circuit whenever these wires are going to be either contrasted or expands or changes its dimensions correspondingly it gives you an idea of change in the resistance just by measuring the change in the resistance there is a change in the voltage in the electrical circuit that's how changes in the dimensions of this strain gauges gives you an idea of what is the input you wanted to measure either a force or a load or a pressure or a torque or some other value look at this okay this is the strain gauge which is been mounted on uh, <clears throat> on a plate whenever this plate is uh, exposed to external load the strain gauge at uh, fixed on the surface will be get deformed all these uh, copper files are going to be connected to different electrical circuits so that it measures the dimension in a different the changes in the dimension in a different directions so this electrical circuitry is been connected to some wheatstone bits so that you can measure the changes in the voltages look at this is one beautiful example i think you might have seen a digital weighing machine top sub plate of the digital weighing machine have this kind of host and gauge underneath of this plate uh, this kind of plate is been going to be engraved a fixed and it's been connected to the electrical circuit so that it gives you the analog output that analog output is going to be converting to digital output so with the help of the signal conditioning devices then finally the microprocessor gives the output in the digital uh, value okay this is how weighing machine works on this uh, principle changes in the dimensions in the strain gauges gives you the value of the load or a force acting on it okay this uh, this how much you can understand these are the different uh, strain gauge uh, um, devices so where Uh, then these things are going to be used to measure the impact force, compressive force, etc. And the the output of these strain gauges uh, been uh, <coughs> sent to the a signal conditioning device. Then it is going to be sent to the microprocessor, and finally 
displacement. Okay, this is how actually you can understand the application of strain gauges. So after understanding the different strain gauges, sorry, sensors and transducers, now you try to understand its specifications. So why this is required? Suppose if at all, if you wanted to develop your own automatic system, assume that you wanted to incorporate a camera in front of your house to check uh, for uh, any uh, mis miscellaneous activity which is going to be taken place in nearby place, in the nearby your place. So you need to know, can, if you, when you are going to purchase a camera, the fellow who is in the shop will ask, what is the range and what should be its specification? What is the resolution you want it? Similar, in, in, in another way you can understand. Suppose if you go to a, a bike uh, showroom and you ask for a bike, if you say, get me a bike, then he won't give away a bike. Why? Because he asks for the specification, whether you want 55cc bike, whether you want 100cc bike, whether you want 125cc bike, or whether you want 250cc bike, or else you want either a two-stroke engine bike or a four-stroke engine bike. Like this, each product have a specification because in international standards, the, the industries which are manufacturing the products will follow common rules and regulation throughout the world so that uh, there will be an interchangeability. The fellow who is uh, manufacturing and marketing the products in India can get the similar kind in other places. And the similar way, even the products which have been manufactured in the Europe countries can be easily accessed and can be used easily in uh, India too. So like this, all the components are being uh, referred by just with, uh, specifications. I think you might have already um, familiar in uh, using your uh, mobiles. When you go for a shop and ask for a mobile, uh, he, he may ask what is the memory you want. Either the RAM should be in uh, you know, megabytes or a gigabytes or a terabytes what is actually the permanent or hard disk memory size and he'll ask for the speed and he asks for the actually monitor size. These are all the different specifications of the mobile. Similar way, all the sensors and transducers which are being used in the megatronic system have a, a specifications because we are dealing sensors and transducers with specification. That's why specifications of a product like even sensors and transducers and knowing of it is actually it's a must before going for its designing and its usage. To start from first specification that is actually a range. A range of a sensor indicates the limits between which the input can vary. For example, you can see an indicator here. There are a number of indicators here, here. So I think even uh, you might have seen in your vehicle indicator, may, maybe even in a bike, uh, the kilometer indicator indicates uh, the value from zero to 240, 120, 140 like this. But in actually, in actual fact, the vehicle is not moving up to that maximum limit. Just for a aesthetic look, just they'll continue. Even you can move your bike up to 120, not more than that. But the meter shows the maximum value up to 180, 200 like this. Just it's an aesthetic look. Similar way, there are a number of measuring devices you can see, like even the sensors have at different ranges. You take an example of your linear scale, a small scale. That is a zero, it measures zero to 15 centimeter. There is another scale uh, that is a feet, uh, foot scale that is a, it measures the number from zero to 30 centimeter. Like this, you can you will have a different ranges. Come to span of a, a sensor a transducer. Span means so there is a difference between a range and a span. A span. In the range, you are uh, counting the number from uh, minimum to maximum. 
whereas in case of a span you are going with actually a specific value that means a 25 cm span a 50 cm span like this the span number may be vary from either it may, it may starts from 0 to 25 or it may starts from 25 to 50 it may starts from 50 to 100 like this in all the cases the minimum and maximum value is 25 Okay, this is actually be referred as a span. Look at these uh, micrometers. So instead of buying a different uh, sized micrometer, you just you purchase uh, one bigger micrometer and um, make use of a uh, different on wheel hand wheels uh, available. By using these on wheels, you can uh, do the similar kind of function which are been uh, done by your uh, uh, small micrometers. These on wheels gives you clear idea of uh, span length. That's how in most of the industries, uh, people are going for a, a bigger sized micrometer so that it's actually handy to measure a different uh, size of a products. Come to understand, try to con uh, understand this uh, uh, specification that is here. I think uh, we are already, it's a familiar word we used in uh, different occasions. There is an error in the instruments. There is an error in that uh, default data in the device like this. What exactly that error? Error means actually it's you are comparing with the true value. Whatever the value you are getting, that you are comparing with the true value. Suppose if I give one, uh, one standard master specimen to you and saying its value is 100. Suppose if you measure it uh, the same, the master uh, masterpiece, if you get uh, 100, it's fine, then your instrument is correct. Suppose if it's showing a 101.2 like that, then there is an error in the instruments. So like this, so whenever you are comparing the measured value with the true value, so that you will get the difference value that actually we call as an error. You look at this. Generally, people will uh, check uh, their, uh, what is called that uh, weighing, weighs, so whether it is giving a correct value or not. You just to go with a very simple example. <laughs> Suppose if you purchase one kg of rice uh, from the uh, shop and you measure the same in your uh, uh, weighing machine at uh, home. Suppose the same rice weighs uh, one kg even in your uh, house, then there is there is no error. <clears throat> Suppose if it weighs uh, <clears throat> 990 grams, then there is an error of 10 grams. Like this, you can see the error. Error is the difference between the result of the measurement and the true value of the quantity being measured. Accuracy. So whenever you say accuracy, you just to see this uh, shooting symbol. See, whenever an arrow touches this circle at the center of this circle, then this is most 100% accurate, we'll call it as. Even a shooter shoots within this uh, circle, yellow circle, even they give 10 marks. That means they measure that accuracy in percentages. That means if your accuracy is one percentage, that means you'll, your arrow may be within this uh, circle. Suppose if it accuracy is uh, two percent, then your arrow may be covering the next circle like this. Zero error means uh, definitely it's at center of the circle. Like this accuracy we are measured with uh, what you call it a specific references. That's where you can understand the accuracy defines <coughs> the closeness of the argument between the actual measurement result and the true value of the measuring measured in, <clears throat> measured in. so now try to understand the sensitivity of a sensor or a transducer <coughs> sensitivity is a, of a sensor is defined as the ratio of change in output value of a sensor to the per unit change in the input value that causes the output change. You look at this uh, graph. Assume that you are measuring temperature of a, a, a furnace. So with respect to time interval, 
you are getting the graph like this. So the curve, the curvilinear structure gives you an idea of temperature measurements at different intervals. Since this is a nonlinear curve, so we try to approximate with the help of a straight line. So this straight line gives you the closeness of this curve. So from this, you are able to measure its, uh, what you call that uh, horizontal, uh, measure its uh, slope. Slope means uh, it's actually delta x by, sorry, delta y by delta x. So this slope remains constant throughout its length. That's how actually we are measuring the sensitivity of the instruments by plotting the graph, then we are, uh, adjusting the square line on this okay so this gives you an idea of uh, what is the sensitivity when we are measuring the sensitivity we are referring this curve curvilinear structures okay this is where actually you can understand uh, the sensitivity so when you come to the nonlinear error so you need to understand what is linear and what is nonlinear for any the input value you if you are getting an output if uh, if it is directly related i think you might have already understood these things in your uh, when you are studying the uh, material characteristics Young's modulus that is actually we call as uh, um, hooke's law so when you are uh, when you are understanding the stress strain diagram of a uh, what you call that iron you can see iron or a steel you can see the stress is uh, directly proportional to strain that's you will get a straight line before uh, it uh, catches a uh, different yield points stress is directly proportional so you will get a straight line that means that gives you clear idea stress is directly proportional to strain means it is a linear condition that means for a quantum of uh, inputs, you are getting that output. It is proportionate. That means you measure the slope at uh, different points, you will get the same value. This is we called as a linearity. We are not bothering about its angle, but we are bothering about its uh, straightness. This is actually we called as actually a linearity. So if any instrument have got this uh, characteristics, then it's actually uh, what you call it efficient uh, uh, instrument on the other hand you can see a non-linear uh, structure see for any input at a different intervals you are getting a different outputs but uh, the the points follow a curve this this curve do not have got any specific uh, integrations so definitely this is actually we call as uh, non-linear you cannot uh, construct uh, what you call that uh, uh, linear uh, sorry uh, you cannot uh, construct uh, any slope for these kind of uh, uh, cur curvilinear structures this is we call as non-linear sometimes uh, some of the sensors and uh, transducers behaves like uh, a non-linear it gives you the non-linear uh, results so that's why that's why we go with some approximation methods. You look at this. So if uh, the output results are uh, forms a curve, then we are uh, going with some approximation line. So from this approximation line, we are able to catch hold of its error. And we'll try to adjust that error to a smaller value. Look at these two examples, it gives you clear idea where approximation lines are all very close to that uh, curve peak points okay this is how the errors are going to be minimized this uh, approximation line gives you the characteristics of the uh, specification or uh, the sensors and transducers that's why the non-linearity indicates the maximum deviation of the actual measured value of a sensor from the ideal curve Okay, this is how actually we are uh, finding out uh, the error of the instruments. So come to the hysteresis error curve. So before mo moving to the definition of this, uh, just to <clears throat> focus on uh, the table. 
so this is a temperature measured using a thermocouple so then there are eight trials the current thermocouple is been deep into the a hot bath and it's uh, the hot bath is progressively rises rise uh, rises uh, its temperature by electric power at a different intervals the temperatures goes uh, high starting from 25 this actually atmospheric pressure sorry temperature 25 30 46 52 like this when you plot the curve for this the curve follows <coughs> convex shape like this this is in ascending uh, in uh, th these numbers are in ascending order so that the curve of uh, in uh, in this fashion so instead of starting from a minimum temperature to a maximum temperature if you start measuring the temperature at a different intervals uh, starting from the peak uh, or uh, highest value say you start uh, measuring the temperature from 85 degree centigrade at different intervals it has to follow the same value but it's not happening it is just uh, um, it's lesser than the ascending value so when you plot these values so the curve behavior like this and the ascending and descending the of our paths are totally different the peak of these uh, two are we referred as an error for any kind of a sensor and transducer these this error must be very minimum so that's where you can understand the reliability of the sensors and transducers this hysteresis is defined as the maximum difference in the output at any measured measurement value within the sensors specified range when uh, approaching the point first with the increasing and then with the decreasing the input parameter so with this example you can clearly understand uh, what is the uh, hysteresis error repeatability repeatability means uh, how much over the time you measure any parameter it has to give the same value suppose if you are measuring a, a pressure of a, a fluid flow pipe say it's giving a 20 bar at a different intervals it may give a little difference in its value say like a 20 21 19 again 20 like this after one hour, even if you measure the pressure of a fluid flow pipe, again it has to give the same uh, readings. Then you can call uh, this instrument have good uh, repeatability uh, in character. So that means a sensor or a transducer should have got a repeatability. So then you will get a good quality, what you call the products. So if you are using these kind of sensors and uh, Transducers. The term repeatability of a transducer are used to describe its ability to give the same output for repeated applications of the same input value. The error resulting from the same output not being given with the repeated applications is usually expressed as percentage of or full range output. This expression that has been used to <coughs> understand uh, what is and repeatability. See, I see there is, these are all the different instruments. There is a depth case used to measure the depth of a, a hole of an object and uh, digital vernier and uh, uh, micrometers. These two are being used either to measure the diameters or length of an object. These digital values, sorry, digital meters should be reliable or should give the same value even when you measure the dimension of an object at any number of times. That's where you can understand the repeatability. So normally, I think you might have already experienced in your uh, science lab, the instruments, uh, what we were used in the machine shop or even a science lab and are of uh, most of the time it's Indian type, Indian make. You look at the Japanese, uh, make 
products like a Casio and even a Mitsubishi. When you check out the quality of those instruments, uh, where you can see the engraved lines and markings and even uh, the numbering and all. So even of, if at all for a more usage of those instruments, uh, I think it gives uh, good uh, reputable values. But that is not the case happens with the Indian uh, manufactured uh, gauges. This is where you can understand the reputability. To understand, to understand the stability means actually stable. The system must be stable. That means, uh, so stability deals with the degree to which a sensor characters remain constant over a time. Okay, they should not change. Suppose uh, if uh, two bar pressure uh, in, the, uh, in the container means, it, the reading must be all the time two bar only for uh, how much over the period you keep that. That's how actually you need to understand a stability. Okay, it, it, there should not be any variation in that uh, uh, measure, measured uh, device or uh, sensory devices. Change in the stability means, stability means there is a drift. Drift means it's because of the component aging. Sometimes, so when you purchase a new sensor and transducers, uh, uh, they are good enough to give good results, maybe for one year, two years, or three years. After maybe 10 years, I think you may not get the similar uh, results of what actually you got it in the earlier uh, days. That's how the stability changes. So this is the value we can call as a drift. So when you understand a dead time or a band, sorry, dead band or a time. See, sometimes I think you might have seen, uh, especially with the thermometer. When you can, when you keep that or when you dip the thermometer in inside the hot bath, you may not get the value immediately. It takes some time. Then it starts showing the values are uh, digital values or it starts showing an uh, increase in the temperature, sorry, increase in the mercury level. It takes some time to show the output. Okay, the time period actually we call as actually a dead time. That means for a given input, you may not get the output immediately. So there is actually a, what you call the, the dead period, the, that dead period afterwards, uh, it starts uh, sensing or it starts uh, giving output. These are the things actually happens in, especially in the uh, burden to pressure gauges because, so whenever you um, connect this uh, gauge into the uh, fluid flow pipe, so inside the gauge, uh, there is a burden tube. So the burden tube, it takes some time to expand to and come to the stable, stable conditions. So after that, it starts showing the results. That's why I think you would have seen in the most of the application, most of the application, the indicator will never going to start from zero. It actually takes some period. Then it's going to be starts showing uh, readings. Okay, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, period actually we call as actually a, a dead uh, time or a band. The dead band or a dead space of a transducer is the range of an input value for which there is no output. The dead band is the length of the time from the application of an input until the output begins to respond and change. So what happens especially with the transducer, you take an example even in a thermometer. In thermometer, the thermometer has to, sorry, the mercury in the thermometer has to expand. So the thermometer takes some time to absorb the heat and to expand. That period definitely you can call as a dead band. And to understand the resolution, I think this is a one uh, terminology we use uh, everywhere. When you go to a TV showroom, you ask for the resolution of the TV. And when you're going for purchasing uh, your uh, mobile, you'll be ask, asking for uh, the resolution of the mobile screen. Then what is the resolution? Sometimes I think you might have observed the screen clarities. If you take a Sony picture tube, you will have very good quality compared to other uh, manufacturing uh, 
there is why because the clarity is mainly based on that number of uh, screen divisions so the those the divisions we call as a pixels for the limited area if you have no more number of pixels then the clarity will be increased so so here you take an example especially in the encoders uh, that actually will be understanding in your uh, future uh, sessions so you look at this example this is a one encoder that is being used to measure the rotation of a shop so a disk be a disk is been connected to the end of the shaft that disk has assume that one or three six three sixty slots so whenever a shaft starts rotating just if you keep counting the number of slots uh, moment then you will get an idea of what is the degree of moment of our rotation of the shaft suppose if a shaft, if a if your number count is 1 then you understand the rotation of the shaft is 1 degree if you count the slot number say 4 then your rotation of the shaft is 4 degrees suppose if these uh, slots are the slots are been further divided like a 3600 then you check instead of measure so instead of measuring 1 degree you are again you are uh, measuring 1 tenth of the degree that's actually we call as a resolution so when you have more resolution so that uh, the quantity being measured and its precision value also it in increases so generally this is the word we use especially uh, least count in our uh, measuring instruments so you take an example of uh, your uh, linear scale The least the least count of the scale is just a, a millimeter. You take an example of a watch or a timepiece. The least count is one second. Similar way, we are measuring that uh, least value of a value. So from the sensor, that's actually we refer as actually resolution. When the input varies continuously over the range, the output signals for some sensor may change in small steps. look at the clarity of these things these compared to these two screens and this has very good quality this is purely because of the highest resolution so this is this this where actually you can understand the screen size is same only thing is change in the resolution numbers change in the resolution numbers so come to the last specification of sensor and transducer the out, output input is this is a one uh, common uh, characters that you can see in most of the electronic devices the output impedance of an electronic device is an opposition exhibited by its output terminals to an alternating current of a particular frequency as a result of resistance inductance and capacitance okay this is a this is the one terminology again you are understanding in your forthcoming slides how exactly this impedance will be affects on a uh, measuring devices okay so at this uh, stage you try to know the definition of it so there are different uh, videos available on this uh, link so where you can understand the difference between the sensor and the transducer these are the different multiple choice questions so you can read out these questions and you will have four choice and you need to select one or two from these these questions are been set on what the information we have discussed in this session these are the books and uh, <coughs> links uh, i referred uh, to develop the content for this uh, session come to overview of the sorry the outcome of this session so so in this session you understood the, the definition of sensors and the transducers and the, the different examples for uh, sensors and transducers 
as well as you understood the, the characteristics or specifications of uh, sensors and uh, transducers that actually we called as uh, performance uh, terminology. I think these uh, terminologies gives you clear idea how to purchase a sensor or a transducer for your uh, design work or your, even your for servicing works when you are going for industries or when you are going for a, a megatronics project. Thank you very much. This is the content developer list. So we all together developed uh, content for this uh, session. Thank you very much.